Hello guys, welcome to the next session of developing e-commerce application from scratch using Angular and Spring Boot. In the last session, we discussed on how we can make the API changes to filter the data by the order status. So uh, we have made some changes into existing API itself so that we can get some um, uh, filter data with the help of order status. So if I just show you quickly, if I just go to the postman, then this is the uh, like a API changes that we have done previously. The API was get all order details, but after that we added one path parameter over here. And then with the help of that, that path parameter, we can just send the um, like order status. So whichever status that we will send over here, accordingly, we will get data as a result. So if I just show you quickly, so first of all, let me just try to log in with the admin because we required JWT token in order to use our existing API. So over here, let me just pass the valid user details. So yes, we got the JWT token. Let me just copy this JWT token and let me just come back to my um, get all order details. And then over here, let me just pass this JWT token like this and let me just click on send over here. Now, if you just see uh, as of now, the status that I'm passing over here is placed. There is one more status that is called as a delivered. So if you pass this status that is uh, called as a delivered, then we will get uh, all the orders which are delivered over here. And if you want all the order details, then we have to share, uh, we have to pass all over here with the help of uh, this path parameter. So we have to pass all over here. And if I just click send, then we will get all the order details which are placed by the different users. So this is how the API is working basically. Now these API changes we have done in the last session itself. In this session, what we are going to do is we are going to see how we can integrate these API changes in our UI side. In short, we are going to just um, like uh, use these changes into our um, Angular side itself. Now, if I just go to the VS code, then let me just quickly show you. But before going to the VS code, if I just go to the Google Chrome and if I just go to our application, then let me just go to the home page and let me just refresh it. So as of now, I'm logged in as an admin. Now, if I just go to the order information, then as of now, we are not getting any data over here because we are getting some errors. So the, the reason why we are getting error is because we have made some API changes and we haven't um done those same api changes in our ui set that is the reason we are getting errors so let's see how we can resolve those errors so let me first of all open the uh, network tab and let me just refresh it so as of now if you just see one one api is getting failed and that api is nothing but to get all order details so it is basically saying that not found so if i just go to the headers then as of now if you just see it is just trying to find out this particular api which is obviously not present because we have modified that api so we have to incorporate those changes um, into our services so if i just go to the vs code then let me just go to the services and then inside the services let me just go to the product.service.ts and then let me just try to find out the correct um, api so yes on line number 19 we have get all order details for admin and if you just see it is ending with the get all order details but as of now we just have to add one more parameter over here so let me just do one thing let me just add one parameter let's suppose uh, status which will be of type string something like this and now let me just do one thing let me just try to append this status at the end of this URL. So make sure you are just uh, giving slash after this get all order details. And then only we are just, we have to just append the variable name. Now let me just save these changes. Now over here, um, I'm expecting some errors, but as of now it is not giving me any error. But yes, now it is giving me the error. So if you just see, it is now complaining that inside the order details dot component dot ts file we have to pass a uh, we, we have to pass uh, like uh, we have to pass this particular uh, where we have yes we whatever parameter we have to we have given over here we have to pass the same parameter from this order details dot component dot ts file so let me just go to this particular file 
and then over here if i just go to the line number 21 then it is giving the error so we have to pass one parameter over here so let me just do one thing let me just create one variable let's suppose status and which is which will be of type string and let me just give the initial value like all something like this over here make sure the all is case sensitive so a is a capital and remaining characters are small letters and now let me just pass status over here something like this and now let me just save these changes let's see whether application is getting compiled successfully or not now so yes it is getting compiled successfully let me just come to the google chrome again and yes now we are able to see the data as expected and our uh, functionality is also working as expected now what we have to do is we have to add some filters over here so we have to add some buttons on top of this table and with the help of those buttons we can filter the data so the buttons there will be three buttons like all and maybe the placed and delivered so whichever button we will click accordingly we will filter the data so for these buttons what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use angular material ui library if you want to use any different uh, like styles or maybe different structures then you can just go ahead because uh, api is like api is the same we have to just make the uh, proper call so if i just go to these uh, official website of angular material then inside the uh, left hand side section you will find one section that is called as a button toggle inside the button toggle if you just see this is something this will look like something like this so we can give the different options something like this and we can just add the click events on these buttons so inside the examples if i just show you one proper example then there is one uh, there is one option that is called as a button toggles with the forms so i think this is the perfect example that we want if i just show you the code then this is how uh, we have to write uh, lines in order to use this functionality but i'll just show you how we can use it but if i just click on the bold then if you just see the text is changing if i just click on the italic then text is changing and if i just click on the underline then we are getting the uh, proper text over here that means that it is basically uh, using the click events and it is working as expected so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use this functionality and one more thing instead of if you don't want to use these like you you can directly use it also uh, use it or there are many uh, alternative ways also you can directly add click event on these buttons also so whichever way you like you can just uh, go ahead and you can just use it so what i'm going to do is i'm just first of all initially um, i'm just going to what i'm going to do is i'm just going to copy these things like copy this particular code and let me just copy it and let me just go back to the vs code and let me just paste it inside my html so if i just go to the order details dot component dot html and after before this table let me just paste this particular code something like this now it is giving me some errors so we have to like uh, handle those errors so one more thing that we have left back is we have to import these apis or maybe import these um, uh, button toggles so how to import it we have to go to the api section and then we have to copy this particular line that is import mat button toggle module which comes from at the rectangular slash material slash button toggle so let me just copy this line and let me just come back to the vs code let me just go to the app.module.ts and let me just import something like this and one more thing that we have to do is we have to copy this mat button toggle module and then we have to give it inside the imports array something like this and now let me just save these changes now the next thing that we have to do is we have to just restart the application because uh, as of now we have just imported one new module and whenever we import any new module then we have to restart the application and as of now we are getting some errors also so how we can do this we can just remove this ng model as of now and let me just save these changes and let's see what happens and now let me just kill the application and let me just start npm run start something like this and let me just wait till my application gets uh, compiled successfully make sure that i'm again repeating the statement 
whenever we you you import any new module then we just make sure that you are restarting the application right so yes now application is compiled successfully and if i just go back to the google chrome let's see what is currently we, we are getting so yes we are getting uh, some buttons something like this obviously we have to change the text of it so let me just do one thing let me just first of all change the text to the all then let me just give the value as all then there is a second status that is called as a place let me just give the value as a placed and make sure like it is case sensitive so make sure you are just uh, using proper um, like upper case and lower case combination over here so p should be a capital and remaining character uh, should be the small letters and lastly let me just give the status as delivered something like this and let me just give it as a value also something like this and now let me just save these changes let's see what happens on the ui so yes we are getting as expected we want some gap between these buttons and these tables so what we can just do is we can just add emt dash three which is margin top three which is a bootstrap class to the table so yes now we are getting some gaps over here and it is looking perfectly fine if you want you can just place it to the right hand side as, as well but i'm just going to keep it as a left hand side the next thing that we want to do is we have to add the click events on these buttons so how we can just do is we can just do one thing we can just add click event something like this and the next thing that we can just do is we can just call our uh, what we say yes so we can just call our get all order details for admin so let me just copy it and let me just paste it over here something like this now over here if you just see um, what we are just doing is we are just not sending any kind of parameter to this get all order details for admin what we can just do is we can just send one parameter over here so we can just use status which is of type string something like this and then what we can just do is like on line number 14 we have just declared one variable that variable value we can send on line number 19 so on line number 19 we can just make it as a this dot status something like this and on line number 23 what we can just do is we can just change it to the status which is the local variable something like this if you are just getting confused you can just change the names also what i will just do is maybe i will just make it as a uh, status parameter something like this i'll just change the name and i'll just pass this status parameter over here something like this and now it should work as expected yes now the next thing that we have to do is we have to just go to the um we have to just go to the html file and then we have to pass the value so we have to pass all something like this similarly we have to add a click event and let me just copy it and let me just paste it over here something like this for placed and let me just paste it something like this for the delivered now let me just copy this placed value and let me just paste it over here let me just copy this delivered value and let me just paste it over here something like this and now let me just save these changes so html file is looking perfectly fine i think still we are getting some error on yes so on mark as delivered we are again getting some error so what we have to just do is we have to just pass this dot status something like this and now let me just save these changes and now let me just go to the google chrome and let me just refresh the application so now if i just click on placed then if you just see like we are just getting only um, orders which is having the status as a placed if i just click on delivered then we are getting only delivered orders and if i just click on all then we are getting all orders so this particular filters are working as expected and we are getting the expected output on the screen so this is the quick session uh, like how to add the filters on the table so um, i hope like you got the idea like how we can uh, add these filters if you have any different scenarios or if you want to add 
filters on any different fields then you can also add in a pretty similar way there will be no any major changes we just have to change the fields and we have to like make some changes on the api and make similar changes on the ui so there will be no any big differences you have to like whatever we have followed for this status exactly same things we have to follow for the different fields also so this is how we can um, uh, use the filters if you still have any questions let me know in the comment section i will try my best to help you out in that case so i hope you enjoyed this session and i'll see you in the next session